Good morning everyone. Fig and I are out on a walk and we've just run into a greyhound that is also a brindle and a lady and she is named after a composer, Prokofiev. Which is just super cool and it was really fun to to walk a little bit with another greyhound. And I don't need another dog, that's for sure. It's it's nice just having one, but I'm almost always tempted to get another greyhound. I just really have loved this breed so much and it's been it has been the most challenging and rewarding dog adoption I've ever experienced. So Fig raced for four and a half years, which is a long time. And he has always been the chillest, most easygoing, laid back dog ever. He's friendly to everybody. So that was never an issue. But he had to learn to be a, a dog, a pet, uh, to enjoy being with a family, to go traveling and hiking. Hiking was really hard, especially. My partner and I had to carry him out of a, of a canyon once because he just didn't want to go any further. When there'd be like a little tiny log across the trail, he would stop dead in his tracks and we'd have to lift him over. Um, so it was years of socializing him in a really different way that I didn't anticipate. Um, come on, Piggy. And yesterday was probably the biggest success <laughs> to like finalize his dog file download. So we've been joking for over a year now that he is an alien <laughs> from outer space that is learning to be a dog and he's downloading this really big file and it's slow. <laughs> and Sometimes the signal is not so great, so it takes longer, and sometimes it's quicker. And every time he downloads a little bit more of this file, he learns something new about how to be a dog or what to do in certain situations. He does still freeze on a walk. This is usually when he's like, I would actually prefer to go over here, but he doesn't let us know which direction he wants to go. He just kind of freezes and waits. Okay, so I was interrupted by the sound of all the traffic as I approached the coffee shop. I think I was talking about the dog file and Fig's download complete. He's at 100% now. And what marked that was him jumping into the back of Brian's SUV, which I never thought that they would come. It's pretty high. I think it's probably waist height for me and Fig is not a jumper. Like I already said, there'd be a little tiny log in the, the trail and he would stop dead in his tracks. But he has been learning how to jump and he did it twice yesterday. We were really proud. Also, it's really hot. <laughs> it's like 44 when I woke up, but it feels so much warmer now in the sun. I'm, <laughs> ah. I want it to be so much colder than it actually is here. And so I always am over-prepared, overzealous for a blizzard outside and it's gonna be 80 something degrees today. Anyway, I'm also still a little bit shy about vlogging in public. <laughs> and so when there's like somebody walking past, I just turn off my phone and stop recording and pretend I wasn't doing anything at all, just walking my dog. Totally normal over here, <laughs> no need to look. So when I had my emergency surgery this summer, I can't remember when. Being brave, oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm 
just gonna keep recording, even though somebody just drove past with all their windows down. I could just be FaceTiming with my mom or something. They don't know. So anyways, when I had my surgery, I couldn't lift Fig into the car. And up until that point, over the past couple of years of having him in my life, he would never jump into the car on his own. And my car is pretty low to the ground. And so Brian and I actually worked really hard to train him to get into the car so that I didn't have to lift him anymore. And it worked. So that was a really big deal. And I was happy with that. I didn't have any expectations of him ever jumping into Brian's car. And now he has, he can jump high. And it was so easy for him and he was so graceful. It was like, he looked like a deer doing it. And it's just like, Fig, this is so, you're so capable of so much more than you realize. So more recently, we went on a hike with him. And this particular trail had a lot of fallen trees in the, the path. And so he had to really, really work on crawling over th or crawling under things and jumping over things, which he has been building up to. We've been working with him on that every time we go hiking. And this last trip, he jumped the highest and crawled the lowest, or crawled really for the first time under a fallen log and learned the commands over and under, which I think is really helpful for him. And so it's just, it's so, it's so wonderful to see. This has been the biggest transformation of any dog I have ever had in my life. I am just, well, oh, it was a challenge. It's a lot of work. There were times early on when I was like, I think I made the wrong choice. I am not a good fit for him. He's, you know, and man, he proved me wrong, but it took a couple years. And the, when I adopted him, the, the agency was like, oh man, just wait six months. The biggest transformation you'll ever witness. It'll be so amazing. And six months passed, a year passed, and it was still like, he was still so new to the world. And yeah, it was hard, but man, I am so in love with this dog. I am so proud of him. I'm so grateful to have him in my life. Worth it. I would do it all over again in a heartbeat. Okay, come on. This way, Fig. Good boy. Okay, back at home for the next part of this video. And let me just get all my ducks in a row here. That is the return of my Caveco Brass Sport. So, real quick, the story of the Brass Sport is that it was probably my most favorite cherished pen. The, the pen that I took everywhere with me, my adventure pen, the pen that I tossed in a bag and went for a hike and camping and backpacking with and did so much with. And it was in some way a security blanket or like a touchstone or something that, you know, just to hold it in my hand was a comfort. And I really love that pen. And a couple of months ago, my partner and I were on a camping trip in a pretty isolated area and my beloved pen was leaking. And so I left it in camp when we went out for a hike that morning and I left it on our little camp table just out there in the open, didn't think anything of it. We were pretty isolated and there wasn't a whole lot of people around. And we get back and the pen is gone and also a pair of socks and a wool blanket. So it was a really strange thing. Like the blanket and socks make sense. It was really cold and maybe they needed warmth, but 
a fountain pen? <laughs> like, that's a strange thing to take. Uh, maybe it looked valuable because it was brass, or maybe this person really was inspired to write, and I can only hope that they are enjoying every moment of it. And and I hope they were able to fix it so that it wasn't leaking anymore. So anyways, flash forward a couple of months, I have not rushed out the door to replace it. I felt actually kind of apprehensive about replacing it, just because that pen had a lot of history and was very significant in my life. And I didn't want to just buy another one and it not feel the same. Uh, I didn't want to force that experience. I had some, a couple of very, very generous people reach out to me and offer to gift me their Caveco Brass Sport, which thank you so much for even considering doing something like that. Um, I did just didn't feel comfortable taking that, um, although it was definitely really appreciated. So last night, my partner, because I have been in contact with a Caveco representative who is wanting maybe me to represent their brand a little, we'll see how that goes. But anyways, so that's been a contact, like something, a conversation recently. And my partner was like, I'm kind of worried that you're going to receive this pen uh, through this new, like, sponsorship or whatever I don't know what to call it at this point and so he he gave me my Christmas present early which was this beautiful Caveco brass sport and I just threw that on the ground this is what it came in this little tin it's already been emptied because here's the pen my special special brass pen has returned to me and it has the bronze clip. Oh, it's so beautiful. And it's so shiny and new. I forgot how shiny they were when they arrived. And it just, oh my goodness. I am so happy to have this pen again in my life. And it feels, it feels just as special as my last one. It feels like my last one now never left. And that's super cool. So it's inked up with a, a cartridge from Diamine, Ancient Copper. As a commemorative, this was the very first ink cartridge that I fell in love with, with my last Caveco. Although when it was taken, it was inked up with Diamine Deep Forest, which was also a really stellar combination. But I thought I would return to an old favorite, and that's that. So I may have <laughs> like fallen asleep with this pen in my hand last night, and it ended up under my pillow. And in the middle of the night, I woke up and I felt it, and I grabbed it, and then ended up falling asleep with it in my hand again no big deal <laughs> and I couldn't wait to write this morning and oh boy did I write and oh, it just feels so good and the nib is great it's a fine nib it's uh I haven't tuned it yet I haven't felt the need to tune it yet I'm just really enjoying it being the, in the state that it is right now and oh my gosh I cannot tell you how happy I am to have this pen in my life again I think I already said that but I just ah, oh, I'm I just love it So thank you, Brian, for this wonderful gift, which now is even more meaningful that it was given to me by a very special person in my life. So it's a little bit later in the day now, and I'm still just, I have, I have my pen here. <laughs> it's just, oh, I was so happy to have it. And I felt inspired to also come out here with my typewriter because it is just such a beautiful, beautiful sunny day. And yes, it's a little bit warmer than I'd like it to be, but I should be thankful because it's sunny and we are certainly blessed with a lot of sun here in Tucson. So 
I have another cup of coffee because that's a problem in my life, um, <laughs> but not really. Uh, but this time a cold brew and I'm just going to sit here and type out my thoughts. So thank you all for watching and I will talk to you soon.